uh, one of those special people. Uh, uh, she, she's one of the movie stars of the liberation movement. You know, she made a lot of sacrifices to, to get this country where it is today. You know, she's, she's, she's got sex appeal, she's pretty. She makes for good entertainment. I think there's no better fit than the, the, the character of Winnie Mandela and opera. I think those two, they are made for, for each other. I mean, her life is an opera. That, and that's essentially what grabbed us in terms of telling the story. But most importantly, the story is an education. It's, it's important because it's a historical story. And it's a story that hasn't been told. People don't know their history. Uh, it's also an incredibly entertaining story. I think as, as, a, as a story arc, we're weaving through. It's very much like a, a film screenplay, the way it was written. She's a larger-than-life figure. And uh, I mean, she was the voice of uh, the country, and uh, and she she articulated the, uh, the aspirations for freedom uh, of the vast majority of these people at a time, at a long stretch of time, over twenty something odd years, where our leaders were in exile or under banishment or in prison. I remember one interview that she gave to, uh, and she was in Brantford. I mean, she said, there will be one man, one vote in this country, and Mandela will be president. I mean, that's almost prophetic for 1979, 1980. Mrs. Mandela, Mrs. Mandela, will there ever be one man, one vote in this country? It's a piece of history, it's more theatrical, it's a contemporary new, I call it a new musical opera. It, it, it breaks form. I come from a space of ritual, so there's a lot of ritual, it's a lot of drum, dance, song, uh, it's bilingual, it's an English casa. I put on shows that I want to go see. And I know people, when they pay their money, they want to be entertained. This show could actually be on a Broadway stage and people could come to it every night. I'm not asking myself all the time what it's like to feel Winnie. I'm, look, I'm looking at it as a role that I'm playing, you know, just like if I were playing Carmen or Tosca or something, I'm looking at it that way. I remember when I was a baby and growing up in Soweto, there were raids happening in our house, but you know, at that age, you don't know. You just see people banging the door. You know that you have to run and hide under the bed or something. You'd be playing. There'd be tear gas coming. You know, they'll. But why was it happening? Obviously, I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. People have judged her. Even the TRC, they were asking these questions during times of peace. They were asking these questions once the struggle had been, was over. And what we're trying to say is, folks, this was taking place during times of war. This was a war that was going on. So the steps and, and the actions that she took were in times of war and you know, who are we to judge? Especially now that times of peace and the war has been won, now to look back and, and accuse her of these crimes. And that was, that's, that's the question we were asking in this story. Who are we to judge? character that I'm playing, and, um, but it's not an easy thing to do, not in the new South Africa, because I think there are many people, white people in South Africa, who have, similarly, similarly to the, um, the German people, you know, the whole thing that happened there, they have a guilt feeling of what happened and they feel responsible in a way. And I'm of that generation that still had a part in that. So it was a very difficult role to do, actually. Christian prayer with these hands. The 
the piece combines two different uh, uh, two different styles. It's the contemporary, you can say the contemporary style, opera of today. And on the other hand, you have a lighter opera, light style. You have melodies, balladas, arias. Yeah, it's the first time. Normally, I do opera about that people. <laughs> It's an education for myself because there are so many things which have been revealed while we were working with the director that what happened during the time because this whole thing is based on the true story. I was very blessed about it because this opera I think it educates, it entertains and it informs at the same time. Designing Winnie is, for me, it's different than most of the operas I've done before, and I've done about 150 operas. Um, very often in the opera, you're creating some kind of real place in another time, another place. In this case, there are places in, in other times and other places, but, but we take a journey through Winnie um, and her memory. So the challenge is to create an inside memory journey in a physical world on stage that helps to support that journey that she takes. It's funny because if you were doing the making of a Shirley Joe trek through my life in a rehearsal hall, I live for the process. I live for being in that space of discovery. It's, 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 it's an opiate for me. It's the first South African opera composed and orchestrated by a black South African composer. I think it's a, uh, an important story that needs to get out. We have not given Winnie Mandela the script. This is not a, uh, a Winnie authorized, you know. Uh, no, 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 none of that. None of that has happened. She doesn't know what, what's going to happen in there. She doesn't, you know. Uh, so this is, this, is, this is no whitewash. You know, this is artists telling the Winnie Mandela story without anybody's intervention. You know, not even Winnie. She doesn't know what's going on. Serious. Yeah.